I'll tell you a strange story. This is the old Patrice the Poldais tram road that used to service the mines up around St. Day and Wheelrose uh, from the little harbour down to Patrice. And as a uh, farm student in my late teens, I used to work in a farm just over here at Mola. And I used to cycle up and down every day. It was a little bit more open than it is here now. A little place a bit further on here, I used to fall off my cycle. I don't know why, but every time I went on, we would fall off. I felt pretty foolish about it, so I didn't say much to anybody. I used to get off on one pedal and go the other side. Now, many people have asked me over the years how I became a dowser. Well, we're now going back to have a look where I think it originally happened, naturally. So let's go along and have a bit of look and see what we might find. The leaf was a little bit further on. Yes, I think it is about there. So I'm going to try my stick and see what sort of reaction that I get here now after all these years. Longer than I like to think about. Go! Let's have it. Now, if I was looking for water in the ordinary way, I would just get a reaction in one place. But it is all along here, very, very strong, very, oh, very, very uncomfortable. Don't like that too much. Now, what's the relationship between that and falling off the bike? I've got an idea. Now, if you would hold that for me a minute, one form of derining rod is this is a piece of welding rod. Now, if we bend that, like that, and like that, into the form of a Z, and we pressurize that, that acts as a divining rod. So I'm going back and start again and see what happens. We just put pressure on that, like that. You can see what a strange thing it is. People might think I'm just doing it, but I tell you what, if you were to share the rod with me, you'd soon know whether it's for real or not. Oh, that's, that's enough of that. Now, my idea is that the pedals on the bike acted just like that said rod. Of course, I came off. Sounds a bit foolish, but that's how it happened. Today, in Cornwall, some people still lead a way of life which has direct links with the original men of these parts. Men like Donovan Wilkins still farm the land and rear the stock it often only grudgingly supports. The Wilkins family, though trained to full-scale farming, only keep a small holding today. It's not their living. That lies deeper. But a sideline they can't let go of. The wool from the Jacob's sheep is still homespun. Don's wife, Margaret, does that with the same care and skill that used to be handed down from generation to generation as a matter of necessity. But the Wilkins lead a much fuller life than would have been possible way back. 
They are surrounded by things they care for. Their living lies beneath the earth and rock they live on. Don Wilkins, water diviner and borehole driller. You'll get him on Truro 560645. I'd like to tell you a bit about the tools of the trade. You don't really need any of them. Because, in fact, I can see water. Uh, what I can see, uh, I can't tell you, but I do. However, we still use witnesses, and uh, this is one of the old traditional water finders tool, uh, the forked stick. And it's just a, a piece of stick out, out the hedge, uh, but it's not. <laughs> this one in particular is a very special stick. I did a great deal of work on the Silly Isles, where I think you might said we could have uh, transformed their way of life over there on some of the islands. And this told me well. Unfortunately now, it no longer works. It's worn out. It's earned me a good living. That's what I can say about that one. It's held in a special way, which we can uh, see later on. But I would like to tell you about some of the other witnesses. And uh, one in particular is uh, this color wheel, which I believe was uh, discovered by an Abbe Mager back in about 1840. Uh, it tells you what you believe it to tell you. Uh, and uh, I use it in conjunction with a stick. It's blank on the back, and I might hold blue like that. Completely different information than I would have otherwise. Now, I believe that the colors of water are blue, white, and purple. And if I get a reaction to the stick for that color, I know I'm over water. Very important thing. It also tells me other things. It can tell me whether there was water there, a remembrance. It can tell me depth. It can tell me the information coming from elsewhere. It can tell me salt water or foul water. Um, they say that's holy water, but that's another story. So there is another witness that we use assisting us to find the water. Now, I've got two others here. Uh, one is a bottle of soda water. You think, what on earth do you want them for defining? Well, there are occasions when there's water in the ground, but you can't get it out. And if I hold that and get a reaction with the stick, I know the water's under pressure. Uh, but if there was no reaction, I don't think that I would drill it. And that saved me a lot of trouble, but to uh, find it out in the first place uh, was uh, uh, quite a lot of work. Now, this is a very strange thing. It's called uh, Gizmo, and there's only one man in the world that I know of who can make it. And I feel very privileged because he gave it to me. And uh, at the time, he was demonstrating the use of it, and I thought, uh, there's a nonsense if ever I saw one. However, it has the property that if this is placed on the floor, and what I'm looking at is not true water, it may be ley lines, force lines, energy lines, all sorts of things, that will stop the stick. I had difficulty in believing it, but I do now. And that's improved my success in water divining by 10 or 12 percent. So there you are. There's the tools of trade. You don't have to believe it, but I do. And with this, I find water. And that's a wonderful thing to do. Wonderful indeed. Although the use of bits of modern plastic may seem inappropriate to such an ancient art. But they do nothing themselves. They're not magic. The point is that they concentrate Donovan's mind and dowsing seems to be a thing of the mind. That it works seems undeniable. Scoff as you like, Don's record is impressive. Farmers pay him good money to find water, and farmers are not the sort to throw their money away on mere mumbo-jumbo. Peter Kent farms 300 acres at Paul Benton Farm near Liscard, and he's chronically short of water. So he calls in Don and Margaret Wilkins, not as magicians, but as a practical team. Well, then I think we better look up this way, yeah. so if we can go in through this gate. Now, um, I'm going to ask you to believe it, but somehow or other, I see water. So I hope that it is clear enough to be able to look round and see what I can find. Mm -hmm. 
I brought Mrs. Long with me. Uh, I had to call her the Sorcerer's Apprentice. See? Yes. You know, she didn't always write, you know. <laughs> but uh, she doesn't do a bad job, and she does help. Now, I can't tell you what I'm looking for, but when I say it, it'll be so clear as though somebody uh, put a flag up. Yes. Um, only reason I ever way to explain it at all was like an uncle of mine, he knew. He said, oh, you do know like you do know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we just have a look bit further. We've got power in this house here. Yes. So that's somewhere the power nearby. There. There's power again on the right-hand side. There is. Oh, oh, that's probably gone. Already, Don has an eye to success. Power will be needed to pump the water when it's found. He knows that. <laughs> so does the farmer. And so does Fred Libby, the land agent. They're not out for a bit of amusement. To them, as to Donovan, water is business. The deal, no water, no pay. Now that feels like water. And when my old mate said, what's that feel like? I said, well, like water. <laughs> Yes? Yes. All right. Surely everyone knows that if you dig down far enough, almost anywhere in rainy old England, you'll hit water. But most of that's just seepage. A working farm needs moving water, and a lot of it. So Don's looking for underground springs with a lot of force. See, I'm looking for where uh, two or more courses cross. Yes. Because yes. you always get more water, say, there than you would there, there, or there. Yeah. And sometimes they cross um, uh, like that, and sometimes they're one over the other. Yes. And this is what we want to find out. So I'm now going to ask Margaret if she'll check it out. Uh, now, she's a bit more sensitive than I am in some ways. Um, she picks up odd courses that perhaps I don't. Uh, I'm attracted to water, and my stick um, goes forward. But uh, Margaret's repel by water. Yeah, so don't so don't make no difference. You've got to be careful. Don't get smacked in the face. Yeah. Um, in fact, we've really got three courses. See, there's an extra course um, coming in there. Now, I sort of see the water and believed is there, but I've got to think of all the reasons now why I shouldn't drill it. Yes, yeah. And if I can eliminate all them, then I'll chance to drill it. So, yeah, yeah, so um, yeah. having done that now, now in the course of divining, I found that um, there's lots of things you can detect with a divining rod, and they aren't necessarily water. They are ley lines, yeah. influence lines, yeah. um, force lines, in fact, all sorts. Uh, and as a water diviner, I got to be able to eliminate them. Yes. So we've been round and we marked out where they think they are. I've got a little uh, magic block here, which has got quite an influence on diviners. And when you put that on the floor like that, if it isn't true water I'm looking for, it can make completely different movement on the stick. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, we've got to find the, the actual center before we make an assessment of what might be there in quantity or thing. Yes. And uh, believe it or not, but we use <laughs> color. Yes. <laughs> you don't have please issue. No, no, no. It's a lot of rubbish <laughs> when, you, when you think about it. <laughs> no matter whether you believe it, uh, I believe it. Good. Um, that'll tell me exactly where the center of the meeting places are. Because if I thought he was where my right foot is, I wouldn't draw him where my left foot was. From experience, we know you can yeah. miss that. So close as that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got very strong evidence to prove that, <laughs> yeah. which I can't go into now during time. <laughs> so we'll have a look for center. There. Just to add to the fun, if I want to know how wide it is, uh, I'm interested to see the, um, how, how wide that course is. So you saw the stick act there in the middle. I'm now holding purple. And purple, to me, and it depends on different people, 
will give me a reaction in a different place. I expect, which is there, that position. And not there, but there. Now, you're looking a bit skeptical of me. You come and have a go, right? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> come and have a go. <laughs> Now, just put your hand out like that. Proper job. Now, turn your hand out. Now, I'm going to make the stick activate it by bending it. Can you feel that? Yes. Now, lift your hand a little bit. Can you feel there's life in that stick? <laughs> there's something moving. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> come walk here now. <laughs> Keep your hand up a little bit. Now, I'm going to start thinking about water. Well, <laughs> hold on to it. What did the stick go for? <laughs> now, we were saying about color. Yes. Right? Will you hold it? You all, you all blew in that hand. Now, you felt that stick go up and down like that. Yes. But blue only answers to the count of one. Now, I'm going to start think about center. All right? And that's pretty well over that peg. I'll get Margaret to check it out in a minute. Now. Now, see, I can't get. That stick won't come back. No, no. No way you can force him back. Now, out of interest, if you like, in a minute. Yeah. Um... She'll... Could, could you help us on this one? Yes, of course. <laughs> when Margaret does depth and quantity, yes. she'll come and whisper to you what she finds. Yes. Then yes. I'll go and do it, and we see how close we are. But I will give you a figure which I will undertake to find for you. Yes. And if I don't get that, I'll do another all for nothing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm fair, aren't I? You are very fair. <laughs> Can be guaranteed. Guaranteed, yeah. Not very many people will do that. In fact, not many dowsers will actually express an opinion of what uh, it is. Anyway, if you like, go and tell yes, him uh, tell what, what it is. You can <laughs> record it. I can't hear it or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I've got to think. In a sense, I asked the stick. Um, I start about 30 feet because uh, I mentally... Uh, disregard shallow water gives nothing but trouble. Yeah. So I say the stick is at 30 feet. Now I find the water at 60 feet, 120 feet, 140 feet, and 200 feet. Uh, the stick tells me that there is 800 gallons an hour, of which I would expect to be able to find 400. Right. 60, 70. I can just sort of feel that. So let's say 75, 76, 77. Now that's where I think there's water. 77. 80, yeah, still there. 85, and again there. 90's dropped off. 100, 110, maybe. 120, yeah. 130, yes. Uh, 140. 150, 160, coming in again, 65. Look, quite, quite a lot of water there. That's uh, three courses we found. 165, 170, 180, 190, 200. No, I don't get a lot after that. So then, let's see what we can find in the way of uh, quantity. I think I'll say here now, um, the stick will tell me so much. Yes. But... I aren't likely to get, you, it's like the oil wells, they don't get out all that they <laughs> would like to get out. At least you'll get some of it. And depending on the nature of the ground, uh, I, uh, in the end, I'll give you a figure. So yes. I'm going to work that down now. And well, the stick is saying to me about 7.5, seven something like that, 750, which is a bit more than what we would expect. So I think, to be realistic, we were talking about 400 an hour. So, um, that's uh, about 8,000 odd gallon a day. Well, that's that if I ask, I think? Yeah, yes. right. I think that that was what I would uh, prepare to yeah. uh, contract with you uh, to find. Yes. Can we check the figures now? Yeah, yes, that's right, yeah. Well, um, the figures I got were... Um, touching water at about 165, and, uh, sorry, 65, 66, 67, but it was still there, 70 to 80. Then I got another one at about 120, 
and a further one down at about 165 in that, you know, give or take 10 feet. And the quantity? Uh, well, the stick said 775, but to be realistic, I wouldn't expect to get as much. They said, Mr. Ken, if we can get uh, about 400, I think uh, if I find a drop more, you'll be happy, won't you? Delighted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Even so, that's uh, uh, eight, nine thousand a day. Yes. Yeah. You think very much alike because Does, your wife's yeah. figure was 60 as yeah. against 65 or 66. Uh, yeah. You both agree at 120. Yeah. And your wife suggested 140 and 200, mm -hmm. and you said 165. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I so suppose for us, when the wife had not to agree that much. And the actual yeah, yield yeah, is exactly the same. Right, yeah. And the overall yeah, total is 775. Yeah. yeah. The wife said 800, yeah. and both agreed that you get 400 yeah. yield. So, so that that's in two pies up there. Really. So, <laughs> there we are. Um, put my money where my mouth is. Uh, that's where I'd really all to find you at that, that amount of water, if that will please you. That's, I'm delighted. Right. So we'll Sorry. go off and look for another one now. We'll better pick this up. And uh, before we go, <laughs> if you don't believe it, they that can't and went, got to pay they who can and will. Right. One month later, and the Donovan outfit returns to prove what up to now might only be the twitchings of a stick. Well, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Yes, yes. <laughs> See, it's easy enough to walk around with a piece of stick and say, I think there's water there. Now I got prove it. You've got to prove it, yeah? I got to prove it. Well, I think I know there's water there, but what we don't know is what the actual ground is. Uh, really, it is a journey into the unknown. I suppose we know there's a bit of slate around because there's the quarry down there on the main road. And uh, there's a slate quarries over at uh, St. Neitz. Drilling's expensive, and Donovan's ready to put his bore down where his mouth was. Helping now is his son, Ralph, who's a dowser in his own right, as well as being in charge of the drilling rig. He's checking to find the exact spot for the bore. I feel confident enough that we shall uh, find it. I'm going to look a bit silly if I don't, aren't I? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Yeah, I should be very disappointed. But, anyway. Well, this is one of the fascinations of the job. If it was easy, I don't really think I'd want to do it. No. But at the end of the day, I won't pat you on the shoulder and say you want for water no more. <laughs> doesn't maintain itself and um, the dirt does tend to hold back the water as does the air pressure down the hole. Eventually, although it may not look like it at the moment, it does uh, come to the water. Did it change the note, does it? That is three gallons in 45 seconds, which is equivalent to four gallons to a minute, which 
is 240 to 250 gallons per hour per day would be somewhere around 6,000 gallons per day. That would be enough, perhaps in an emergency area, you know, for to carry through, but I would think that we would ought to get up to somewhere 10,000 to have a safety valve. That makes me feel happy when I see that coming up the thing. I've got yeah. an anxious moment when we start to think, my God, I wonder if I have got it right. But the um, job satisfaction is enormous when you get it right. There you are, Mr. Kent. We found the water. I yeah. put months ago and said to you that uh, as a diviner, I would find you water yeah. suitable to your needs. Well, we found the 400 a gallon hour, which I hope you're uh, pleased with. Uh, some don't believe in diviners, but uh, all I can say is you were walking around on it, and there it is. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's see what's it. The proof of the pudding is in the drinking. True. Yeah. Very much so. Let's have a look and see what we can find. There are lovely clean water. How about that? <laughs> Are you happy with that, Mr. Delighted, sir. Delighted. Good for you. Well, come on, time for us to go now. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's super, isn't it? <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> So everybody's happy, and more important, they've stayed happy. For well over a year now, a strong and steady supply of excellent water has throbbed and pulsed up the hole that Donovan's team made, where the diviner said it would be. Though exactly how and why he knew, even he can't really say. There's no magic in my work. Dowsing is a natural phenomena, there for our use. I only consider myself to be an ordinary person, just making use of that natural phenomena. I look for water, just as the old people have done for generations. It is a very ancient art. Moses, in the Bible, struck the rock with a stick and the water issued forth. He was dowsing wasn't he? The southwest of England is wet. It gets a lot of rain. Yet, surprisingly, perhaps, this rainfall does not always give people usable water. In high summer, particularly in country areas, water has to be looked for, and much of it, even in this age of high technology, has to be found by dowsers. Each of these 500-odd pins marks a water-divining discovery somewhere in Cornwall or Devon made by Donovan Wilkins of Chasewater. Indeed, he's made his living out of finding water the old-fashioned way, and some of his most successful finds have been on the Isles of Scilly, nearly 30 miles out from Land's End, surrounded by the Salt Atlantic. Now, there's more work to do on the island. So Don's off again with his wife Margaret on a combined business and pleasure trip. Donovan found many successful sources on the Isles of Scilly, an area where fresh water tends to be in even shorter supply than on the mainland.
developed an affinity uh, to the islands and the islanders. And I've been privileged to work on several of them and, and meet and live with the people and work there. Island life of necessity uh, has its difficulties. Uh, there's not too much natural resources there, and that's partly why I was there, to find water. Such a wonderful thing to do, and I think appreciated uh, by the islanders, because there was certainly was a lack when I went there. However, the time I left, there was water for everyone. This is one of the places where I found water. Uh, I'd like you to have a look at it. And Margaret as well. Uh, as you can see, there's very, very little area around in which we had uh, to look. Previously, they'd had a shared water supply. Have a look a minute, Margaret, will you see what uh, you can find? I'll tell you why in, in a minute. And uh, it really wasn't enough. And just here, I managed to find where three water courses cross. And we drilled it down through one, two, three. And I wonder whether Margaret uh, will in fact pick them, them up, because she's never seen this lot uh, before. It was in the days when I did all my own uh, divining. But uh, I don't know whether these uh, people sitting down drinking their cup of tea realize that for me they wouldn't be drink drinking it. All that is still there. All that's, that, that's, that's very good. of Scilly are special. They attract a rather different kind of holidaymaker than mainland resorts. They don't usually come to lie on beaches and wallow in the sun, but to walk, watch the wildlife, or just absorb the unique and ancient atmosphere. If they want to reach the smaller outer islands, they must go by local boats. They don't wait for couriers. They'll tend to find out things for themselves. And if there's a dowser like Don aboard, They'll listen to him. While well, I was drilling on St. Martin, uh, a gentleman and his wife came round every day that they were there to see how they were getting on. Really? And we got discussing like we were there. And eventually the subject got deeper and deeper. And the last this gentleman said, well, uh, I think I ought to tell you I'm a man of the cloth. Okay. So I said, well, that's fair enough. I accept that. Okay. And um, it really doesn't make any difference to what uh, I've got to say, but I said I'd like you to come up to a certain place up here with me. And uh, we went up there to somewhere where I know was a site of early habitation and uh, where certain stones had been placed. Right. And uh, I asked him to share the divine involved with me. Right. And he uh, was a little bit shaken. Because he picked something up. Yes. Yeah. And then I said, well, what does it feel like? And he said to me, it feels like when I kneel in front of the altar in my church. Right. I'm interested I said, in that. You've got yeah. an altar stone, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. You see, the altar stone. An ancient place of prayer. Collects energy. Yeah. yeah. And redistributes it. Yeah. And I think a lot of the power of the church could come from that. That's right. 
I, you get the feeling in a very old church, don't you, that you don't get Not in the new one. Not in the new one. They uh, yeah. don't uh, dedicate them in the right way, in a sense. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The old I, people knew. I guess you're able to pick up ley lines quite easily. Tourism is expanding. That's a fact of life, like it or not. On the island of St. Martin's, developers have planned a big hotel. There has been local opposition, and it being a land belonging to the Duchy of Cornwall, Prince Charles has had to be consulted about design. The result is a building built to look like a row of traditional fishermen's cottages faced with local granite. But this apart, the big snag has been the total lack of available fresh water, which is where Donovan comes in. Everything for the building has to be brought in by boat, including the owner, Robert Francis. He's a hard-headed businessman, but he still feels the difficulties can be overcome. Well, as you can see, it's an absolutely wonderful location here, with white sand beaches, beautiful clear water, and St. Martin's, of course, has got the best beaches in Scilly. And when we found this site here, we realized that there wasn't anywhere better. It's absolutely unique. Before we could even build it, the biggest problem we faced was that we couldn't just rely on mains water. There's no mains water here. And we had to drill for our water. First of all, we had to find it. And we needed somebody really clever to be able to do that. And we found Don Wilkins. So we called Don in, and sure enough, he produced the goods. And we've got now three fine boreholes, which are producing us a good water supply for the hotel. So we're set up at last. Now, come on, boy, you'll be blasters, mate, time you'll finish with okay. me. Okay. Oh, it's good old, that's a beauty. Now, Donovan the Diviner puts on a new hat, a blaster's hat, an explosive headpiece. All right. Yeah. He's got to make a hole big enough to hide the hotel's septic tank. Having found water, he's now got to find a way of getting rid of it. Don loves explosives almost as much as he loves water but he well knows how tricky they can be. Did you hear about the old Cornish miner, so he went in the pub? You're full um, of tales, you yeah. are. <laughs> he said, I'll have four pints. Well, <laughs> I still got my fingers. <laughs> so, to safe enough if you're sensible. All right. Right, well, another stick down there. Lovely. And a spacer. And another. Uh, well, better come off, I think. That's right. Mark your paper and break your stick. You'll do. Now, when I blow two whistles and I say, that's where you pass. <coughs> Not yet. All right, Richards. All right, back a bit. All right, Ian. Okay. <coughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Fire. I think you press the button too hard. <laughs> what about that for a job in your anyway? Uh, not too much, not too little, just right. Very nice, Don. I think the um, the actual rock of split. You know, you, you, you can have a look at it down there. It is. Absolutely you, you, think, you think about it. We're one of the first people ever to see it. Yes, We've been there yes. for millions of years, and we come along and to, to, to stir it. Uh, to be quite honest, Don, I don't want to see it again either. No, no, we don't. We're good. Donovan Wilkins has been immensely successful as a dowser. He's turned skeptics into believers. But he's not infallible. Uh, to be sure, because when you think about it, there's five diviners that have a look at this. Yes. Now he takes his islander friend Keith Lowe to a spot where, for once at least, he did get it wrong. On that occasion, his tools didn't help him. Neither the bits of coloured plastic which he calls his witnesses and which help to concentrate his mind, nor the more traditional hazel forks. Dowsing is an art, not a science after all. But still Don is puzzled. For sure. I saw uh, water here, as did Margaret, and of course it talked a thousand gallon an hour, which we've never found over here. No, no, that's, that's and vastly more. When we were looking for a lot of water, uh, I said to Ralph, uh, what did he think about it? And he said it 
felt all right. Well, I sent a map off to another map dowser. Yeah. So, in fact, that's five dowsers who looked at this. We've all got it wrong, because we drilled out 150 feet. Yeah. And there's no water, none. But what are we looking at? I don't know. It's the sun in the air now. It's completely you know, changed. Has it? changed completely. We've got a lot of green all the way around the outside. Ooh. Well, that's the sign of a depleted... Yeah, of course, but it course, didn't give it? green when... Not when we were here before, no no. no. no, but now it's picked up yellow as well. Uh, so, uh, what we're all looking at, I don't really know. It perplexes me, it really does. It irritates me a bit if I come to think but of we it. We haven't got the water colours on the centre anymore. So it's actually changed. It's actually changed completely. Is that because that it's been drilled? Well, drilling must have the fact that uh, drilling does yes. influence yeah. uh, the energy lines there. I suspect we ha may have a meeting place here of the information about water and not the water itself. Um, I don't really know. No. But you? it does show that we ain't always right. Fine ship for uh, disabled. I should make it up to able or disabled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I going the right way? John Hicks is one of an old established Isles of Scilly family. Now he's ferrying Donovan and Margaret to the little outer island of Gu. I certainly thought the way he's waving at him may have had a fishing line out. <laughs> yeah. With him is his crew, Rita Parker with the stripy sweater and Piglet, centre with the wet nose. There's the weather as well, and it's getting worse. Old fog coming in a bit, uh, John. Yes, it is, Don. It's looking murky all the time, yeah. Not so good. You've got to know your way around in the islands, I think, here, uh, it, when the fog does get it in. It does help I, a little bit to know where you're going, I must admit, yeah. Sometimes you'll be out, quite a nice day, and you'll see a yeah. bank of fog coming towards you in a couple of minutes' yeah. time. You're in fog thick as a bag. I won't go on goo today. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Um, I won't go up and have a look at the... Uh, Old man of the goo up the old man. there. Yeah, that's in, the, the interesting old uh, uh, stone. Yeah, that's the one standing up there now. You can see up there, look. Yeah. That's the old man there. Yeah. So, something strange about the old man up there, Don, you may know more about. There's this old story in Scilly about the old fisherman. Yeah. Who would go off fishing quite often, you know, fog would suddenly come down. Think as a bag around the boat, you know, wouldn't have a catch chance to get known normally. But this old boy, something would tell him exactly where to go. And he'd just be going along and always end up back here at the queue. Something, I don't know what it was, something would lead him back here. Yeah, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Yeah. Because of some of the strange things that I found up there. As a water diviner, you come across all sorts of things yeah. which uh, aren't really water. Uh, sometimes I try to uh, disregard them, but. He was so powerful up there yeah. uh, that I couldn't. And uh, I don't know whether like you like go up there and have a look at it sometime. Yeah. But yeah. this is for sure. Coming away from that rock, there are job to know energy lines mm -hmm. or force lines, something uh, uh, yeah. like that, uh, which I'm able to divine. Ah. Now, I see water sometimes. I wonder whether you, this old fisherman can see the lines that came away from the old man with you, like a direction post. It's a possibility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, that's I, it. I didn't matter how thick the fog was. He that's an interesting idea. idea. Yeah. Green line at that point. What do you find it? I'm finding two lines. One is green, and the second one is yellow. Yeah. Yeah. It is negative, not positive. It's definitely negative. Uh, the yellow line is now coming up. It's quite a wide line. Yeah. Ah, there it goes. That's interesting. That's it's intriguing. intriguing. <laughs> yeah, it was funny what uh, John just told me about. The uh, fisherman who seemed to have found his way back. Yes. I wonder whether he's 
yeah. uh, picking up those lines. Well, it's the width of the line that makes me think, because it's not a narrow one. It's, it's quite a wide line, which they would be able to yeah. pick up. But the fisherman? Yeah. See, he wouldn't be using the rod. No. So perhaps he saw it like we see water. Exactly. Yes. Very, very likely. Intriguing. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> 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 That's interesting, isn't it? Now the mysteries of dowsing deepen. Not only apparently can water be brought to light through this ancient art, but things unseeable and untouchable. This is still not magic, but we are entering a field where senses and even knowledge have been lost for ages. The island of Gyu is connected to the larger St. Agnes by a sandy causeway. Donovan has found much water on St. Agnes and many friends, like Bernard Tucker here in the pink shirt. But he wants to look at Gyu now for a very different reason. And I found a very strange thing. Normally when we find water, uh, if you follow a line, it tends to break up uh, like the branches of a tree. Yeah. And this was the first time that I ever found a course which uh, came along and stopped. Yeah. That leads me to think that we don't divine water, but we divine the information and the energy carried by water. And I think that whoever put that stone being the right stone in the right place and over a water course knew very much what they were doing. So you think somebody actually put the stone there rather than naturally? I really do. And when I walked around, and the first time I came here, uh, I didn't have any preconceived ideas mm -hmm. of it at all. Mm -hmm. But let's go around and have a look. Mm -hmm. Look, um, can so you... Uh, hang on to something for uh, Yeah, I'll have this stick for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, Margaret, would you have uh, the stick? Yeah, sure. um, I'll do the water first, yeah. and then you come around with... Um, uh, perhaps that one on colour. Yeah. But I'll do the water first. I think, in all honesty, I'm... done enough water dowsing that what I say it should have some reality in it. Now that's a very strong course. It really is strong. Now I go around, we'll walk all the way around again. I don't trip over you. And the first time I ever came across it, it was here. Yeah. Never found that before, and it's still like I found it. So that's one thing. Now, I'm going round now and think about the old man of the goo. Yeah. You, you follow we, me, will you, Margaret? Yeah. And I'm very thankful that Bernard is here, because in a minute I'll show you what may be a strange thing. Yeah. Because he was the first one that brought me up here. Yeah. Now, uh, I don't know what it is, but by thinking about the old man, I'd probably get different reactions. So it might make a kick mark on the floor just to see where it is. So I'm going to think about the old man of the goo and see what we got. So I get a reaction here now, which uh, I didn't get for water. Go have a look at that, Margaret. And there. Another one there. Now that's interesting. See, I've walked over the water line and didn't get it. But I got it. I got another line there. These are very, very powerful lines. You share a stick with me in it. You think I'm doing it, but you want to try it. You never shared a stick with me yet, have you? No. Oh. To get very uncomfortable. Are you getting on, Margaret? Are you getting any colours? Yes. I don't necessarily know, John, what these colours mean at the moment. Yeah. Not necessarily water colours. Yeah. Uh, very often, with green, we might find that um, 
Uh, that means a depleted course, but I don't yeah. think it's rather than... Now, when you were out in the boat, what did you pick up? I was picking up green and yellow. Well, look, John, from here, where were we in the boat? Straight, straight out through there. Not and that's, there. And that's, that's where... Just picking up from. Okay. And that's where I had the yellow line out in the boat. Yeah. So, whether they <laughs> went like the, like the segments of the circle, mm -hmm. or whether they're straight lines, I'd have to do a lot more work to yeah. find out. To anyway, work. come on, have a go with me. <laughs> the way in which we hold it is mm -hmm. like that, reasonably firm, not too tight, or you might break me stick, and he's worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. All right? If you bring your hand up and out, like just, just, just absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Now, whoa! I'm going to activate the stick by bending it. You have to keep your hand. Now, can you see a fill of light that's in that stick? Yeah. Right, now you come and walk with me. And I'm going to think about the old man of the guild. See, my hand is open. Mm -hmm. Now, do you hear the stick creak? Yes, yes, right. God, that's amazing, isn't it? Well, we see what it does to my hand. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the stone. What are you actually thinking of when you do it? Just a stone. Just a stone? I don't know what else to think Nothing about. Nothing else, just no, a stone. I don't know. Now, this is the interesting and strange part. Bernard here. Mm -hmm. uh, we came up here to have another look at it. And we thought it would be interesting to put sort of two people in line and so we could look over mm -hmm. and get a line. And it just happened to be that the line that goes through Bernard's house, which is the one we've just found there, I put Bernard to stand there. I won't see what happened. Bernard, can you stand? See if you can get it very specifically. Now, Bernard, will you stand aside, please? That's right, you come in about there. And see what if you can find what colour it is. Good. Good. I sometimes say there's all a lot of rubbish, but it's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Believing, and what have you got? It's a blue line. Blue line. Blue right. Line. Now, Bernard, could you stand there, please? And I think we want to stand a bit back one side. Now, Margaret, you're more sensitive than I am. Yeah. Um, forget the colour. Yeah. Yeah. Never done this? Right. Come on, go on. <laughs> go on, go on, Margaret. Now, be open-minded about it and be, yeah. be to your own self true. And walk in front of him and see whether we get it. Now, maybe you don't believe her. Come and try it with me. Would anyone do that? Would anyone stand and come and do that? No, I don't know. We'll, we'll put you there in a minute. <laughs> that you give John your stick. Yeah, Bernard, please, would you oh, stay, stay, stay there a li little bit further over? I'd like to try it, Rita, because she's never tried You, You no. ever doused before? No. Oh, come on, catch no, all this. No, no. Other, other, other hand. Now, perhaps we'd better have Margaret's stick. That's what we'll you have four hands for that. Like that? Yeah. Right. Now, turn your hand out. Yeah. There we are. Lovely job. Keep it in that position. Can you feel this light Gosh, in the stick? Gosh, yes, I can. Right, come walk walk with me. Now, we should I walk behind Bernard to start with. Yeah. Hold tight. All right. Now, oh. what reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Good heavens. Yeah, go around another side of him. That is amazing. Come round, keep your hand in that position. That's it. Now, back through here. Now, we're going to pick up the line again, I suppose. Yeah. Now, look, my hand's absolutely open. Yeah. Yeah, about that. <laughs> now, is that Amazing. It's a mystery, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. See, that's really fascinating. Yeah. How do you explain that? Why, 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 why can't you do that? You know, what have you been doing? We don't know whether it's a bronze or whether it's I'll tell you what, though. Blue is my colour. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, that actually is. When you come over there, you see I paint everything blue. Yeah. yeah. Well, so now, that, that, yeah. that don't surprise yeah. me. It's a very special uh, colour. I rather suspected, and I've been yeah. waiting a long yeah. time yeah. now, yeah. to come yeah. back uh, yeah. to see whether yeah. that was right. Yeah. But yeah. did you feel it? Let's go back uh, yeah. to yeah. the old really fisherman. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if I can see water, could this fisherman have seen the influence of that stone? Picking up the power now, lines. I don't know whether it was narrow lines or whether they were segments like Margaret's wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we haven't had time to work that out. Did he, in fact, get in that position that when he picked up that line, he knew his way home? Exactly, yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? 
We, Don, we've seen you going around finding these power lines. Why does it happen? Well, honestly, I don't really know. Uh, but I got some pretty good ideas, or at least it's like theories. You don't have to prove them, do you? Ley lines, we know exist and are put there by man. Mm -hmm. They may be associated with these stones. Stones seem to collect the energy. I think this is where the activation comes from. And all over West Cornwall, in fact, lots of places that I go around, I got a job. If I happen to see one, I got to stop and have a look at it. Yeah. And uh, there's all sorts of thoughts put towards it. Communication. Maybe as uh, we found the way with uh, people years ago. There weren't the roads. You take what, uh, ground like this. If there was an active stone, uh, that could be the sense of direction. That may be why a lot of these stones are placed on the crossings of roads. Yeah. So there's another thought. Uh, all sorts of ideas. So you've got communication. Some even said that they had some control over the weather. Uh, that we we could do with a bit of that. So <laughs> like right. more being forgotten than we now now know. That's that's for sure. So there's all sorts of avenues that could be investigated. And various people have got various prejudices. Say, mine is the water, obviously, because I earn me living from it. And I think that water activates these stones, if you know how to go about it. Mm. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to rediscover it? Mm. See, maybe pass it on, uh, record it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So much has been lost. Mm. So, there we are. <laughs> The water cycle is a wonderful thing, really, isn't it, from all aspects of it. I, I'm a contented man here. I could sit down here and just like that. Beautiful, beautiful. I find it a wonderful thing to look at it and listen to it. All water in all its forms is a lovely thing. I'm very privileged, really, to have this on my doorstep, come down here when I like. And I'm also very privileged to find water for other people. It's a good thing to do. Seems strange to some people, perhaps, but to me, a very natural thing to do. Water. Donovan Wilkins is more than a dowser, a diviner of water. He's a man of many parts. He lives with his wife Margaret in the heart of Cornwall, by the lake he created himself. That's no easy achievement, but then Don can turn his hand to almost anything. I've always fancied a water wheel, and now I've got one. I remember many years ago, about 1939 or so, when this particular wheel was installed at a place called Wheel Bassett to supply a, a little household. 
And I'd often gone past and looked at it and enjoyed it. And when I went back a couple of years or so ago, I found that it was abandoned, derelict. And I managed to purchase it, and I had to completely rebuild it. New spokes, new bearings, new buckets. And I've had great joy to think that I've saved something which might otherwise have been lost, because it'll be never any more made like that, because the patterns got lost in a fire. And I can look at it, and I can hear it. Very ele elemental to me, very basic. I love water. And I can't think of any better way than to hear and see a water wheel, or perhaps a weir. I've got it to work. Simple, but a great joy. Great delight. Every New Year's Day, members of the Cornish Muzzle Loaders Society meet at Donovan's place for their big shoot of the year. <laughs> Lost and changed. It's for fun, this. The handling of restored old muzzle loaders, the fire and the bangs they make, rather more important than actually hitting a clay pigeon. Never mind the target, Don says. Shoot for the bang and you'll rarely be disappointed. I think it was a real cheer went up for the first pigeon that we ever shot. You won this <laughs> Paradoxically, for a man of peace, Donovan has always been a gun enthusiast. He's passionate about firearms, loves bangs. He's been chairman of the muzzle loaders for years. Who did that? That's yours. I never called. That's a zero for Ernie. That's a zero for Ernie. Fell in the technical side. Pull! That's a zero now. Just a hot. As a club, we seek to uh, collect and restore uh, and show these early weapons. And people think, well, why? Well, why drive a vintage car? Because it gives you some greater satisfaction. Look at something like this, made by Harkham of Edinburgh. A double eight. Now the man who made that, he's dead and gone. And yet, is he? You see, he lives on in this. And I wonder how much of what we do today that will live on a hundred odd years after uh, we're gone. <laughs> When she speaks, she says something. Pull! <laughs> that pays me no end. <laughs> Makes you feel good.
Like many countrymen, Donovan is not over-sentimental about game. He's been a deer warden for years, and although he loves these wild fallow deer, perhaps because he loves them, he has on occasions to shoot them, to improve the bloodline, to thin them out. But his interest goes deeper and merges with another passion. Donovan believes deer are dowsers, that they find their territory by sensing lines of energy under the earth. Early one morning, Don and Margaret are invited to join fellow warden Chris Phillips on another estate. It's not ground they know, so they can test Don's theory and do the necessary culling. The numbers of deer have to be controlled. You can only have a um, healthy herd of deer if you keep their numbers in something like uh, uh, balance with where they live. We can have a quick look in there. Yeah, and go on down there. Yeah, look out, you know, where old yeah, Jimmy Jackson's yeah, yeah. never is. Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Yeah. I think that's a likely place on this wind. Yeah. Deer being naturally a predated animal, uh, they have developed their faculties in such a way uh, that uh, makes us look uh, very poor indeed. Sometimes you can uh, fool their hearing. Sometimes you can fool their sight. But one thing is for sure, you'll never ever fool their nose. They need just one sniff of you. And I think that uh, there are some deer that know me as an individual. And I think we must uh, smell appallingly because it's as though you uh, hit them on the end of the nose if they just touch a scent like that. And for this reason, oh, the fascination to uh, pitch your wit against a very worthy quarry. look to take out the worst, uh, the old, injured, anything which isn't as nature would have it to be. Uh, this has given me great joy because I now see the results of my labor and I think I can honestly say look after a wonderful herd of deer. I don't think that felt anything. No, I'm I, sure it didn't. <laughs> no, I hope I, I go as quickly as that. That's right, yes. That's a very yes. humane way of uh, keeping them under control. Oh, They're beautiful animals, aren't they? Beautiful. There is one uh, time of the year which is extra special, and that's round about the early part of October, when the rut takes place. And this is a very exciting time uh, in the deer calendar. And part of it is that with fallow deer, they take out a territory and they scent mark it. Uh, they make scrapes in the ground. Uh, they urinate and they fiercely defend uh, these uh, territories. And I would often wonder why. Why did a particular buck take a particular uh, territory? And did he use it year after year? And it suddenly came to me one day that there were certain places that were always held by the heads and chief, the great bucks, or the hierarchy. A energy center, a source of power. And I think I'm right. If deer are dowsers on their own ground, some people, it seems, can do even better. Dowsers have long held that things can be divined not just on the ground itself, but from a map of that ground. Men have even claimed to have found water in a Middle Eastern desert by working on a map in England. Dowsers can't tell you how this is done, but they fervently believe that it can be. As Donovan is the first to point out, 
You don't have to believe it, but I do. Chris, in the many hours that I've spent watching deer, I'd often wondered why a particular buck would take a particular place. Uh, I suppose it's not often that many uh, stalkers are dozer or uh, the other way around. And it suddenly came to me one day, I wonder whether the bucks are attracted to some of these very special places where uh, they're aware of something without any preconceived ideas. And I went to uh, one of these old stands that I knew about and doused it, and a strange thing, it douses very similarly to the stone circles uh, down at Penwith. Mm. Now, uh, I wonder if old people saw this and saw it as a, a centre of power, or maybe fertility, and they put their stones and their religious places there. And then it came to me, if this is the case, we ought to be able to douse for unknown stands. And what we would like to try to do today, and what Margaret is doing there now, is by using a piece of deer antler as a pendulum and a witness, she's going to see whether or not she can find one of these old established stands, which you said you've got a number of them up here? Yes, we have. Got several. Does that mean anything to you where Margaret is marked there? Yeah. yeah that, look, so that looks... There should be one about very, ten, yeah. ten yards in off the, on, off the right there. A very, very strong one there. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of travel in that yeah. area. Yeah. That's if I can read a map, right? <laughs> be interesting, actually, to be able to read it on a map, really. You, yes. you, you wonder well, where, Margaret, it, where it comes from through the map. Yes. Yeah. That's a very strong one. Now the pendulum is beginning to swing. Now I can see exactly where it is, that one there. Yeah. Well, what yeah. I'm going to suggest is now, having found those places, could we not uh, go there and have a look to see, in fact, whether we're right? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to see, you know, how accurate <laughs> it is on the map, actually. Well, there's a chance for you. Now find out where your yeah. deer are. We're up in uh, Codwood now. Uh, is there any nearby, you reckon, that... Uh, yeah, I, I reckon that one there will be well, about another three, four hundred, yeah. and it's just down on the left-hand side. Well, a, if you can identify the bend uh, on where the you think there. it is that uh, Margaret's marked on the map, uh, let's go down and have a look and see uh, whether or not we've got this right. Righty ho. I reckon he should be just about ten yards in over there. Well, all right, let's go look. I brought me uh, uh, some dowsing rods with me, so uh, we'll go down and we'll have a look. Here are old stand, being used well, used most years. Who was it? Uh, only a short while ago, the buck here mm. with uh, mm. eight doves. Big old buck, been using it. Uh, and leaves have grown over it a bit now, but... Uh, and you reckon that's from being here for lots of years? Oh, yeah, you see the way it's flattened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't move this amount of ground in a very short time, do you? No. There's a lot of ground no, to move. No. Well, was he a fairly big buck or was he a great buck? Oh, he's a good buck. Good yeah. buck, yeah. Because that's where I think that yeah. those sort of bucks are the ones that uh, are likely to be. I've got a couple of dowsing rods. I don't know if you've ever tried it yourself, but uh, yeah. uh, there's one you might like to try. This is just a simple uh, L rod. Uh, oh, yeah, look, you've got, you've got yeah. it. Yeah, no grass there, yeah, see, at all. Yeah, we move the leaves, and there, it's absolutely raw. Well, whether that's the centre or not, I don't know. But I'm going to walk around and say to myself, well, is this... Uh, and, and energy. Look, oh yes, yes, yeah, 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 definitely. No, uh, no doubt about that. Yeah, that's the obvious signs of a rotten stand. So, uh, I'm going to say, where's the centre? 
And uh, there we are. There's one line uh, running in that direction. So I reset the rod and try it again. And yes, we got another line. And another one. If I can get around here. Oh yes, there's a very strong line there. I think possibly the, the does are attracted to that. It's very Yeah, well strong. you went the same way then. Yes, yes, that's right. So let's follow it around and see what... Uh, well, I'll, what we I'll get. get out your way a minute and then... Yeah. Another one there. Now there's a strong one again. And look, that's a long one of the, uh, uh, their yeah. tracks anyway. Because he goes out and frays some of the trees out that's there. That's right. So what it amounts to, uh, basically, is... I'm the, the there you are. See how that yeah. turns for you, uh, just in that uh, position. Somewhere there, there is an Earth energy which has yeah, attracted bucks. Yeah, it <laughs> Yeah, it surprises you because you haven't done it before. No, I've, I've never had a go at this. I mean, it's quite it's quite strange, really. That, I mean, you know, because <laughs> he, go, he goes slightly to the right first, and then he comes right round. Yeah, well, they are. You were dozing, and you've never had a dozing rod no. before uh, today. No. So, what a thought about it to be well, able to find deer uh, with well, a piece of wire like that. What about the um, pendulum? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't whether, know. You've got it in your pocket, would... Margaret. It's easier to find what you're looking for, whatever it is, if you hold something that's that's similar. Relative to deer. So, if you're looking for a buck, hold a piece of antler. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's quite a strong reaction. That's more than you might expect to get. What do you reckon, though, really? <laughs> well, with all these things, it's very difficult to say. But in my opinion, right there, there is an energy center, whatever that may be. The only way that we can actually measure it is with things like this, by a dowsing rod. But it's my opinion that these great bucks are aware of that. They come here for their stand because I believe those bucks, and they fight hard for them, as you know, that holds a stand like this, yeah. will throw more progeny than, uh, than others. And for sure, the does are attracted to these places. Now, uh, I can see a run there. I can see a run over there. Now, when I hold that up like that, there's a very definite movement of that rod that way. And when I was walking around the other side, which led me to think where the center is, which mm -hmm. is roughly there. And here, you saw for yourself, when you cleaned away the uh, leaves, see how much mark they've been scraping and they've been urinating and fighting all over it. This is an exciting place for the deer. Now, I see a relationship between this and the old people who put their... Uh, stone circles and standing stones on very similar places. And in fact, one place uh, where there was an old established stand, when we came to douse it, it actually douses very similar to the stone circles that are down Penwith in West Cornwall. Mm -hmm. So there's a tie-up between dowsing, uh, these centers, uh, deer, and these early people. And I find it fascinating but uh, someone who's never doused before yeah uh, that one seems to work very well uh, for you think of the line yeah there you are there that, he goes that, he goes that, back the same that, way as you went so same line th there it is and the deer follow these uh, uh, indelible lines in the ground they've been there a long time look at that go <laughs> did you do that well no <laughs> not, not as much, you know, I mean, not, I don't think you tilt it. I think it comes from within us. Yeah. But uh, uh, nevertheless, you don't deliberately do it. It's very difficult to show this. People think, oh, you're doing it. Mm. But uh, no. No, you don't, I don't feel anything. No. It just happens. It happens, yeah. That's yeah. dozing. Yeah. <laughs> Give the British an interest and they'll immediately form a society around it. A black That's true of divining. Wing Commander Clive Beaton, DFC, RAF retired, is a vice president of the British Society of Dowsers, and he runs weekend seminars on dowsing both for skeptics and believers. But in addition to that, you'll find many other lines which are associated with forests. Don Wilkins is at this one too as a guest instructor. But as well as lecturing, 
and so that students can test whether they're true dowsers or not, he has already proved water under the ground they will operate over with their plastic dividing rods. Just a sign of the times. Try again. Right. Just, that's right. Come yes, back a little bit. Yes, it's moving right for you. That's great. You measure a difference. And there we are, the sticks. Ooh, well away. That's better. Now, I want it to be your pull. No, not mine. Feel it coming towards it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're a negative doubter. The stick came back. back one. And it did with the other ones. All it comes out of the way. Ah, so that's it. Now, that came from your thought. Oh, yeah. Now, why not try it on your own? Okay. Many people think that there's a great deal of mystery about divining. And people sometimes look at me a little bit in awe. I'm a strange person. No, I don't really think so. <laughs> water in that. <laughs> yeah. But if you just hold it like that, that holds your colour in exactly where you want it, OK? Yes. Then you hold the rod as before and carry on as before. Right. I believe uh, that there's a natural propensity uh, in most people. Look, uh, these various ones that are attending this course now, uh, some of them have never divined before. You look at him uh, over there a minute, and you see that stick. You just look at the concentration, and away goes the stick. So it is there. Well, what separates uh, me from him? Hard work, years of practice. Uh, it's one thing to say, oh, yes, the stick turns. But what is it saying to you? It's the interpretation of that, which is what it's all about. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. Mm. Have you ever done this before? Not really, no. What do you feel about it? Well, it's uh, still slightly bamboozled, to be honest with you. <laughs> 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, 96, 97. Have you ever done this before? No, not for depths. Uh, I've just been used to shallow drains, finding drains, but uh, never done anything uh, deep. Right, well, you're all doing terribly well as far as I can make out. Nobody is a failure yet. Even you, who said that you didn't <laughs> think it would work. Yes, I so didn't far. have any confidence in it yesterday. Oh, good. It is something that's a lost art. It's a something that we've never used since, since the early days of time when people had to know how to find water in the in the hills, not in the valleys, because down in the valleys were dangerous animals. They lose the hills and they had to live up in the hills out of harm's way. And we've lost it. We haven't required it. And as we become more civilized, we use more of our other five senses, our tactile senses, rather than something which we can't pin down and say, yes, we can take you in class and show you which part of the body your sixth sense is belongs to. It is something intangible, but exists in all of us. Modern education is such. See, if you can't prove it, it doesn't exist. We do all sorts of things. We can't prove it. Uh, I do with when I drill for water. Uh, but it does exist. We do do it. These people are doing it. And they're just ordinary people. Otherwise, if it gets wet, they aren't going to be worth very much. So, there you are. If you suspect there's water seeping under your house or a ley line gouging through your garden, get yourself a rod and have a try. You may be a dowser. But to be another Donovan, you may need rather more. From a boy, I've always loved bangs and cannons and guns like that and things like that. People say, I've uh, never grown up, but think of all the fun you'd miss if you did. <laughs> it was funny the other day, a, a chap came down from the bank to assist me in making me will. So having disposed of all I got or haven't got, he uh, said, and what did I want done with myself? So I said, well, I think I ought to be
cremated, don't think we should take up good agricultural land. And then I said, I want the ashes brought back and put in this cannon and fired out over there because all my life has been bangs and water and trees. And I can't think of any better thing to do. But he looked a bit skeptical <laughs> until Margaret said, uh, oh, he means it. And then he said, well, who's going to fire it? <laughs> so we offered him the chance, but I didn't think he took it up very kindly. So we've got this well loaded up now. The more you ram it, the better the bang. Plenty of powder. Yeah, but this for a way to go. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs>